What's going on guys? Another knife review here for you. This is of the Spyderco Kevin Wilkins Leaf Storm. Um, this is collaboration between um, expat Kevin Wilkins who's currently living in Germany. Um, I think most people know him um, for his uh, custom grips that he makes for the uh, Griptilians, Benchmade Griptilians. Um, he does a G10 uh, custom grip with these dimples with a you know backspacer or aluminum backspacer for the larger Griptilians. And I used to own one, I think I have a review um, from a while back of those grips. And um, it's a great, it's a great grip and really changes the feel of the um, of the Griptilian. But anyway, um, this is, you know, the Leaf Storm is one of his custom knives that he makes. Um, so if you go to Wilkins' website, um, some of the knives that he makes, and I, apparently I don't think he really does um, many folders now. Uh, most of his stuff is kind of kitchenware or um, fixed blade type um, fixed blade type knives. So, um, yeah, I actually had a chance to get one of his folders a while back, but I think the price was a little bit too high for my taste. So, um, yeah, I guess I was kind of glad that I was able to uh, not bite on that one. So, but anyway, uh, the Leaf Storm is a pretty cool compact knife. Um, if when you think of EDCs or just little kind of secondary knives, uh, this seems like a really great option. Um, what you have in this collaboration is a 2.4, uh, almost 2.5 inch blade. Um, so it's legal in I think pretty much every state and if not county or city, um, you know, laws across the United States. So a um, very non-threatening blade. It's got really got this um, almost kind of like a kitchen knife feel to it, you know, which is what he, what he does a lot of now. Um, very steep hollow grind so this is you know definitely makes for a great great slicer knife um, and you've got this you know huge spidey hole for such a small knife um, in here uh, overall weight of this knife is 2.5 inches and what you have is a extremely thin <coughs> excuse me um, titanium frame lock but if you were to measure out down to the lock bar cutout, uh, it's actually maybe thicker than a lot of titanium knives. So for instance, uh, Sebenza, when you measure out the lock cutout right there, uh, it's not much thinner, you know, when you think of the strength of the knife. But the face of the knife, obviously, um, where it engages with the tang of the blade, is definitely going to be smaller so um, I don't know if that will hinder I'm assuming it'll hinder the strength of the lock um, somewhat but again you're talking about a small knife this is not going to be a chopper it doesn't have the weight behind it to be able to do any kind of chopping um, you'd be able to you know really push cut and and um, carve out things with this knife I think it would do a great great job with that um, on the other side you've got a what I believe is two piece uh, G10. I think this spacer is still uh, a separate piece. I'm not positive. I thought I saw lines. Yeah, I think I can see a line coming from here, down here. So um, not quite Strider-esque, um, but you do have a pretty thick slab of G10. So similar to the Spyderco uh, Southern Flipper, you know, you got a asymmetrical uh, feel or look to this knife, you know, with this thick slab of G10. Again, you know, with a knife this size, I think it's meant to be like that, so it fills out your hand a little bit more. Um, I don't know if Wilkins does that or specializes in, you know, asymmetrical um, handles or anything like that, but um, for this one, that's what they got going. Um, I believe you got some metal pillars you know this is translucent g10 and some people joke that this is uh, snot colored g10 but this is the natural color of g10 before it's dyed before it's treated or anything like that so uh, it's kind of cool that you can almost somewhat see the innards of the knife you can see the the bushing 
uh, kind of shaded in this area. Um, when you look from the top, you can see that there's somewhat of a metal uh, barrel coming from, or actually, maybe it's just a screw. I think maybe it's just a screw that's going all the way through uh, the G10 because this, you can see right there under the pocket clip, you know, there's no um, female screw to, to house that male screw. Um, and same thing, same thing on this side. Uh, when you flip it over, it just screws right into the titanium frame. This pocket clip actually is a, a USA Knife Makers titanium pocket clip. So I replaced the Spyderco one, uh, which was a satin finished um, stainless steel pocket clip with a Spyderco bug on it. So I decided to uh, take that one off and replace it with this clip, which I think is much better uh, for it. You got a huge, like a humongous stop pin um, inside right there that um, engages with the blade tang. So it's a very, it's a very solid knife. For a knife this small, you know, no blade play, no up and down rock at all, like whatsoever. It's probably more solid than some of the heavier duty knives that I have in terms of up and down play and those kinds of things. Um, this is made in Golden, Colorado. So, you know, as I've been doing some uh, comparisons between Golden, Colorado knives versus some of the Taichung Taiwan knives, um, you know, the finish on this knife is actually very good. Um, it, this knife is perfectly centered. It is sticky lock, but, um, you know, at least for this knife, the finish is, is actually very nice. Um, you got this nice beveling all the way around the titanium, you know, all the way around the, the lock cutouts as well. So this is a nice touch, um, really adds to the aesthetics of the knife overall. You know, so that bevel work is well done. Um, the jimping on this knife as well is super, like crazy hard cut. Um, it's it's really sharp and it kind of just digs away at my skin. Um, you can kind of see right there how it just pushes and digs into the skin right there. Um, but overall, it's not that uncomfortable. Um, the edges of the blade or of the spine is. I would say very, very lightly rounded out. So it's not the most comfortable. Spider hole as well is lightly rounded out, but not close to as um, comfortable as the hole on the Spidey Flipper. So again, you know, in terms of fit and finish, I would probably chalk it up to, um, to the um, Taishong Taiwan plant, you know, at least for, for this comparison. Uh, you do have this kind of integrated lanyard hole as well. Um, so you, if you can slip a lanyard small enough, actually it's pretty big. Um, if you can slip it through the hole and come out through the top here, um, you would secure a lanyard uh, this way. So kind of an interesting feature um, if you're into carrying lanyards. So reverse grip, very capable, not the most comfortable um, in hand. Basically the way it works is you know, you have these two fingers that are going to um, secure it down the middle and then your other two fingers will, you know, rest on these two humps right here. So very, there's my Spider-Man right there. Um, Four grip, very, you know, it's very comfortable and it's a capable blade. For a knife this small, you're also getting a .125 inch thick blade. Um, so again, it's going to be the same as Sabenza. Um, same as this Martin right here, with this is a two point two and a fourth inch blade, so even smaller than the Leaf Storm. Um, you got the uh, TSF Three Sisters Forge uh, credit card tactical right here with uh, gosh, I don't even know one point one point five inch or one point seven five inch blade. Um, this is an extremely comfortable knife in hand. And then small Sabenza and Singo, which I'm going to be reviewing down the road. Um, you know, this probably one of the best EDCs like options out there, in my opinion. But anyway, um, you know, when you compare these uh, knife sizes and blades, here's the uh, Benchmade MPR as well. So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite knives, the Siebert collaboration. And... Uh, I really love this knife. This is an overbuilt, thick, small EDC type knife. And um, yeah, I think this overpowers the Leaf Storm for sure. Um, but anyway, that aside, 
you know this this knife overall um, as, I think could really slip easily into your um, watch pocket and your jeans and it disappears you know because it's so thin and all those things um, it could be a very capable secondary knife I think I said that in the beginning um, strong frame lock a little bit little bit of stick there but you know overall I think would make for a good either like women's like small knife or um, yeah that secondary knife in your watch pocket um, should anything happen to your large knife or if you needed something that is people friendly I think this one would do well alright so anyway uh, the quick review of the spider Leafstorm. leaf storm overall I think a, a good good blade um, maybe a bit overpriced in my opinion um, right now as I look at uh, blade HQ they're charging 171 uh, for this knife retail at 260 and that's crazy there's no way um, there's no way it deserves to, actually, sorry, retail of the Spider Echo Southern is actually $400, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's the uh, Spider Echo Leaf Storm, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, guys, uh, thanks for watching my videos, and I will see you on the next vid, thanks, bye.